thanks for the introduction and thank you uh, for it's my pleasure here to, to be here to uh, give this talk. I'm going to talk about uh, some of the monoclonal antibodies that we are now routinely using in uh, therapy and some uh, additional uh, treatment. Um, based on antibodies, uh, these are my disclosures. Uh, so uh, just as an overview, I think we all uh, now in myeloma community recognize that monoclonal antibodies have clearly uh, transformed the landscape of uh, myeloma therapy, particularly in relapse. Uh, so I will review uh, some of the data there, anti-CD38 uh, single agent and combination data, as well as the uh, SLAM F7 combination data. Um, the question being asked by this talk is, are we ready for uh, antibodies in the front line? So I will uh, review some of the data around that and then uh, touch on uh, monoclonal antibody-based product on the horizon. So we'll start with anti-CD38. Uh, and here, uh, daratumumab is the, uh, F the currently FDA-approved uh, agent. Um, there are other agents in development, uh, isatuximab as well as uh, MORE202. Um, so these antibodies, uh, as a class, clearly target uh, the myeloma uh, CD38 antigen uh, directly uh, and lead to uh, uh, either a direct or a variety of indirect met methods of uh, killing uh, myeloma uh, cells and perhaps also uh, modulating the microenvironment. Uh, these uh, antibodies were first evaluated uh, as single um, uh, drugs, uh, daratumumab as well as isatuximab and more, more 202 uh, in um, highly refractory patient populations. Here I'm just highlighting uh, the combined analysis of uh, the Gen 501 Phase 1 2 trial and the Sirius uh, Phase 2 uh, trial that was uh, presented as a pooled uh, analysis. Um, in th the patients here were very highly refractory uh, to uh, a, a, me a median of five prior lines of therapy and the, the combined overall response rate was uh, 31 percent. Uh, this is relatively similar to uh, data uh, that was presented with uh, isatuximab as well where the response rate was 24 percent. Um, this, uh, if for, for uh, DARA, this led to uh, FDA approval uh, in patients uh, refractory to uh, IMIDs uh, and proteasome inhibitors uh, following three prior uh, therapies in uh, November of uh, 2015. This was followed uh, in relatively uh, uh, quickly uh, uh, by two uh, randomized uh, phase three uh, studies. Uh, this, uh, the Pollux trial uh, shown here looked at uh, patients in early relapse uh, who had received at least one prior therapy uh, and uh, were allowed to have prior lenalidomide but were not refractory uh, and those patients were randomized to uh, Dara Rev Dex um, versus uh, Rev Dex. Uh, another trial that was started uh, very uh, soon after the Pollux trial was the Castor study that uh, looked uh, at a similar patient population that had to be, uh, and, and here the combination partner was uh, Velcade Dex, um, and this was a um, pa patients that had to be uh, uh, not refractory to prior uh, bortezomib. So I've uh, put the intention to treat analysis, the latest updates from uh, ASH this past year uh, for these two uh, studies. Uh, the Pollux trial on the left uh, after uh, 30, almost 33 months of median follow-up uh, clearly has a, a, a better uh, progression-free uh, survival uh, that is ongoing. Uh, similarly, the intention to treat analysis for the Castor trial uh, Velcade Dex uh, shows uh, uh, about a 17-month progression-free, uh, medium progression-free survival benefit versus a seven-month. Both of these for the Velcade Dex, Dex arm alone. Both of these studies uh, were highly significant uh, and uh, demonstrate uh, efficacy uh, in this uh, early relapse population and uh, resulted in FDA approval of these uh, agents in early relapse. 
uh, was important. You've heard about MRD earlier at this uh, session, and uh, of course, the, the, there uh, remains uh, some controversy around MRD negativity, but um, what this, uh, this was one of the first uh, uh, set of uh, studies that looked at MRD negativity as uh, uh, an additional endpoint. Um, and what this, uh, this is uh, data here from the Pollux trial, uh, the Castor trial is similar. What one sees is that there's a much higher rate of MRD negativity with the addition of daratumumab to uh, Revlimid dexamethasone here. And importantly, uh, on the right, let's see. Um, you can see that those that achieve 10 to the minus uh, five level uh, MRD negativity, uh, irrespective of the therapy they received, uh, continued with a more uh, durable, progression-free uh, survival benefit, highlighting that perhaps how you got there didn't really uh, matter, but you could get there more uh, effectively with the addition of uh, daratumumab. Uh, in terms of uh, toxicities here, I've uh, just put together the uh, both trials side by side with the most common uh, both hematologic and non-hematologic toxicities just to highlight some differences between the, these combinations. Infusion related reactions with the monoclonals um, in uh, both studies were relatively similar. Uh, mostly uh, grade one and two, uh, mostly with the first uh, uh, or second uh, dose. Uh, you can see that, uh, the, as you heard from the last talk, there's um, concern that CD38 is expressed on uh, the myeloid compartment and neutropenia is increased uh, with the combination of uh, daratumumab. Uh, and there are uh, some additional uh, uh, diarrhea and fatigue were the most common issues that we deal with uh, in these patients that stay on these treatments for a fairly long period of time. Uh, neuropathy, uh, all grade was slightly increased in that uh, Daravelcade uh, arm uh, and thrombocytopenia as uh, well. Again, uh, highlighting that you are potentially uh, uh, targeting the, the early uh, myeloid uh, or the early uh, uh, bone marrow compartment with uh, this uh, agent. And. Infections, uh, including uh, pneumonia, high-grade infections, and upper respiratory infections were slightly more frequent in the DARA-containing arms, which is something that we do observe and is uh, a clinically relevant uh, issue. Uh, I think many of us that use DARA to uh, recognize that over time individuals uh, will develop hypogammaglobulinemia and uh, sometimes uh, immunoglobulin replacement therapy uh, can, is uh, necessary and helpful in uh, this patient population. So what about in a later line therapy? Uh, these uh, studies, uh, particularly the Pollux trial, uh, looked at uh, daratumumab uh, in combination with lenalidomide in patients that were lenalidomide sensitive. In many cases, we are treating patients with lenalidomide maintenance, so they are not lenalidomide sensitive. This uh, <coughs> daratumumab plus pomalidomide index uh, trial here shows that uh, this is also an efficacious combination with a 60% overall response rate with a medium progression-free survival of uh, nine months in a heavily pretreated patient population. So this also is uh, an option uh, for our patients. In this case, again, uh, infusion-related reactions are an issue. Uh, for first dose, um, neutropenia is a more profound effect in this combination, uh, although febrile neutropenia uh, rates are relatively similar to what one would see with POMDEX by itself. Uh, GCSF was frequently used as a supportive uh, therapy, and uh, again, infections and upper respiratory tract infections uh, are uh, an issue to be uh, aware of uh, with patients that uh, continue on these therapies. So overall, I think these are very uh, effective treatments, that, uh, but there are a few uh, practical challenges that are faced by uh, uh, both patients and clinicians with the administering of these drugs. Because of the infusion-related reactions, there's a very long infusion time, so some, uh, some uh, uh, 
emerging data that's uh, helped us in clinical practice has been that this accelerated infusion uh, time starting with third dose that was reported by uh, the Ohio State group. Uh, what they uh, tested out was whether or not after the first uh, couple of doses, uh, they could do a more rapid infusion uh, in patients that uh, did not have severe infusion-related reactions with the first few doses, and they showed that 90-minute uh, infusion was safe. Uh, in our practice, we are uh, routinely uh, now doing that. And another uh, a, a formulation of uh, daratumumab, a subcutaneous formulation uh, in combination with hyaluronidase, is also going through uh, development. Uh, early data shows that it is also it is uh, at least as uh, effective and as uh, relative to historical uh, data uh, as a single agent. And a, a comparison uh, phase three IV versus sub Q formulation is currently uh, accruing. So, uh, what about the sort of the other uh, uh, monoclonal antibody, anti-SLAM F7 or elotuzumab? So this is a drug that, by its, uh, that that uh, can uh, activate uh, potentially NK cells and work in synergy with NK cell activators, um, and. Uh, um, uh, also target uh, myeloma cells and lead to uh, direct uh, uh, CDC, ADCC, and potentially ADCP type uh, mechanisms of myeloma cell killing. Uh, unfortunately, in a phase one study, the activity was somewhat uh, limited for this drug as a single agent. However, when it was combined in a phase two with uh, lenalidomide and dexamethasone, uh, response rate and duration was uh, better than expected. This was uh, followed by a, uh, a, a phase three uh, trial that uh, compared lenalidomide dexamethasone with or without uh, elotuzumab, again in lenalidomide sensitive patients, and what this trial demonstrated is uh, a increased durability uh, of uh, response uh, with a prolonged uh, progression-free survival time. And this is actually, for monoclonal antibodies, the study with the longest follow-up to date that shows that even uh, as long as uh, uh, five years out, uh, uh, there's still a proportion of patients that are that remain on this therapy and continue to benefit uh, from this therapy, uh, a higher proportion than those on lenalidomide dexamethasone alone. The combination resulted in deeper uh, responses. Uh, there are also infusion-related reactions with this uh, uh, antibody. Uh, there are there uh, generally milder. The infusion can occur over one hour. Uh, so it's a little bit easier to administer. Elotuzumab has also recently been uh, looked at in a randomized phase two uh, in later stage uh, disease uh, with pomalidomide and dexamethasone. Uh, here, the uh, this is a study that was uh, reported at EHA this uh, last year uh, in patients with more than two prior. Uh, uh, two or more prior lines of therapy that were refractory to their last therapy, uh, refractory to lenalidomide, uh, and a proteasome inhibitor uh, who were pomalidomide sensitive were randomized to receive elotuzumab uh, in the standard sort of weekly uh, uh, schedule uh, for, uh, eight week, uh, for four, eight weeks to uh, as a loading and then a monthly maintenance um, versus pomalidomide and dex. And uh, what this study showed is that uh, in this uh, regimen was actually uh, quite uh, effective with a 10-month uh, progression-free survival relative to uh, a 4.7-month uh, progression-free survival for pomalidomide and dexamethasone alone. Uh, the level of neutropenia and infections was, uh, relatively speaking, lower uh, in terms of the sort of high-grade uh, events than uh, one sees with uh, the combination of daratumumab, um, uh, as well as the level of neutropenia was lower overall. I, I would say this is probably uh, both are well tolerated. This one results in less uh, uh, infectious uh, issues and complications. So I think the additional monoclonal antibodies uh, clearly improves treatment of relapsed myeloma. Uh, daratumumab addition improves upon Lendex or Bortezdex. Uh, it's an 
it's active as a single agent, uh, and there's encouraging efficacy also in other combinations with uh, several phase three study readouts pending, uh, including with carfilzomib, dexamethasone, and pomalidomide, dexamethasone, both are being evaluated. It's uh, phase three plus or minus daratumumab. Elotuzumab improves upon Lendex or Pomdex response and PFS in sensitive populations, and both are overall well tolerated with neutropenia and infections uh, being sort of an issue that uh, develops uh, that is manageable. But needs to be uh, taken into account. So these, um, how, do, how can these agents be used in the front line? I think since both are well, reasonably well tolerated, the obvious thought is, okay, let's add them uh, in the front line. Uh, I think as we can see here, as our therapies have improved over time, so have our responses. Um, and uh, to the point where we see pretty much a, all, almost all patients respond to current triplet combination therapies and uh, they respond deeply. I uh, showed in the chart on the right sort of the MRD uh, negative uh, rates for uh, both uh, uh, RV, RVD plus or minus upfront transplant or KRD on its own. And so the question is, is do monoclonal antibodies improve on this? Can they deepen uh, MRD rates relative to our standard therapies? So the one of the uh, few studies, the phase three studies that's read out in this space is uh, a study that looked at uh, Velcade mefalon prednisone um, given for nine cycles versus uh, daratumumab in addition to that also for nine cycles followed by daratumumab essentially maintenance uh, therapy. And uh, the primary readout here was uh, PFS. And what this uh, trial showed is that there was uh, certainly an enhanced uh, PFS uh, signal. Uh, and it seemed to persist, although it's very relevant that this is a group of patients uh, that continued to receive daratumumab, whereas the uh, VMP arm uh, was on no therapy. Uh, so it's, in, in a sense, perhaps a comparison of uh, both initial response as well as um, the effect of maintenance. So how was that initial response? Uh, you can see deepening of response with the addition of uh, daratumumab and a higher level of, uh, oops, a higher level of uh, MRD as well. So clearly this does uh, deepen response. One of the challenges of this uh, combination therapy, uh, this led to FDA approval for this agent uh, in combination with these drugs, but this is not a, a set of medicines that we routinely use uh, as induction therapy in myeloma. Uh, so how does, uh, how can we use uh, daratumumab in combination with uh, um, uh, Modern regimens, this is a, a study that uh, was a phase 1b to look at uh, DARA in combination with a carfilzomib given on a weekly basis and lenalidomide and dexamethasone. And some of a small number of patients, 22 patients, and what one sees here is that uh, it, this was a reasonably um, effective combination with everybody re uh, responding. However, depth of response here is uh, uh, perhaps not uh, as high as one would hope, although this is a very small number of patients. Uh, toxicities, again, infusion-related reactions, slightly lower than uh, in, in prior uh, studies, uh, but overall uh, hematologic toxicities and um, uh, other non-hematologic toxicities that one would expect, uh, a transient grade three cardiac failure that, uh, from which the patient recovered. What about elotuzumab in newly diagnosed myeloma? So there's a phase uh, 2A ELO uh, RVD study that's been reported. Other, other trials are uh, pending. The um, phase 2A study showed, again, 100% overall response rate. That's what you would expect with RVD by itself. A VGPR rate of 71% or better and a 24% uh, CR rate. Um, this, it's hard to know how this compares with, because this is relatively what, similar to what one would expect with uh, RVD by itself, so hard to know how this compares. However, there are uh, phase three trials uh, uh, looking at RVD plus or minus ELO that I'll hopefully read out relatively soon. There's also uh, an RD plus or minus ELO trial uh, that will also hopefully read out within the next uh, year. So I've shown you that you know most, most of the data look, talked about is monoclonal antibodies as uh, drugs that focus on targeting a, an antigen and direct effects perhaps mediated by the FC region, a uh, combination of CDC and ADCC and phagocytosis. 
clearly these have transformed myeloma therapy on, and are uh, very relevant to our patients now. Uh, but antibodies can also be obviously used as a drug delivery tool, and I think it's very exciting that uh, there is an antibody drug conjugate uh, that's targeting BCMA uh, that has shown a 60% response rate and uh, in highly refractory uh, patients and is now undergoing uh, registration uh, uh, studies. And there are also other ways to engineer uh, mon uh, uh, antibodies to uh, bring together other components of the immune response, the so-called bispecific antibodies, and here I list BCMA uh, and CD3, as well as CD38 and CD3 studies. Uh, just as an example, I, I sort of pulled uh, BCMA, engineered antibodies targeting BCMA. This is a very, very active uh, space, and these, this is just a, a listing of the various um, antibody drug conjugates that are in uh, clinical uh, development here, uh, the bispecific and, uh, antibodies and bispecific engagers, all that are uh, being developed. Uh, but I think it remains to be seen how, how, these, how effective these will be and which one of these will uh, emerge uh, as uh, therapies that we can use for our patients. So I think, you know, we've spent uh, many, many years with melphalan and high-dose melphalan and prednisone. I think we had a period of novel drugs, bortezomib, thalidomide, lenalidomide. Uh, now, uh, in recent years, we've uh, had a lot of new drug approvals. It's very uh, exciting and ongoing uh, development of newer uh, drugs and uh, a, a variety of immune uh, strategies uh, that, as well as uh, non-immune strategies that are ongoing uh, in development. And so with that, I will close. This is the myeloma program uh, at MSK, and thank you for your attention.